Uh, oh, oh god. I guess I'll try to fight too. Oh. Two's not working out. Wow, you gotta really hit them while they're down. Take a lot of hits. Okay, that went horribly. Let's heal. Man, did you see the spikes they have on their hands? I don't know if those are some sort of weird claw thing, or if it's like an actual weapon attached. It's one of the prisoners. Birth of a Landmark. Some of the Earth's oldest rocks lie at the bottom of Devil's Pit. Thousands of feet thick, the rocks are made out of sediments. About 200, about 200 million years after they formed, colossal geological forces lifted them up into a range of mountains that may have been up to five miles high. Eventually, the mountains eroded into a plain by millions of years of rain, wind, and frost. About one billion years ago, that plain rose into a second mountain range. Then, these new mountains were worn away again. Later, the entire region sank beneath an inland sea, where fossils of primitive shellfish on the seabed eventually hardened to form shale. Afterwards, the region was elevated again into a high plateau, and the earlier seabed now became the surface, with the ancient rocks at the bottom. These are weapons? God, that's gotta be so bad. Maybe this one works? Must be going crazy. I guess we just saw something. I'll be damned if I know what- oh, whoa. Was it raining while I was looking through that? Hmm. Bat's Lament Falls. The text is almost too blurry to be readable. The waterfall before you, the tallest in Devil's Pit, is called Bat Lament Falls. Bat's Lament Falls. No, Bat's Lament Falls. It was named by the natives of the area after a rare species of bat indigenous to the area known as the Weeping Bat. Weeping bats spend the entirety of their lives in Dayu's Tusk Cave, located towards the bottom of the pit. The weeping bats were named by the natives who observed that the bats secrete a special fluid from their eyes that deters unwanted parasites from um, infesting their ocular cavities. Ew, that's a disgusting sentence. The natives believed the bats were weeping, saddened by being uh, imprisoned in such a deep, dark chamber. The weeping bats have been known to be unpredictably aggressive and very protective of their offspring often attacking larger creatures that also reside in Devil's Pit. 
However, no attack against a human has ever been reported. my weapon. Shit, I need something. Yeah, I guess that'll do. Did that just close behind me? I never even got to see what was forwards. Need an axe or something sharp. Ooh. Pickaxe, that'll probably do. Well, it's got a... Yeah, like a bladed axe on one side, actually. That'll definitely do. flashlight anymore? I can't turn it on. Oh. They have a hood over their head. There's no lock or anything. Is there a tool that would allow me to get in there? Maybe like wire cutters or something? Let me look at my inventory. Do I not have my light? I don't. Maybe it fell down during the cutscene and I didn't notice. Water chute. This collection of water wheels, cogs, gears, and trows was used to transfer the natural power of the underground river to various mechanical systems. This was the engineer's control hub, which allowed him to redirect the water's flow via a series of wooden trows, which in turn powers various mechanical devices such as the main elevator, a flood control pump, and even an early electrical generator. This device was restored to its original working condition by the Silent Hill Historic Preservation Society. S H H P S. I swear if the acronym would spell out something cool, but it doesn't. Right, so we gotta get it working. So all this machinery is powered by an underground river. Not really sure what I'm looking at. Start messing with some wheels, I guess. Hmm. Wonder what the water pump's for. Hmm. 
Okay, well, that's, do <laughs> that's doing nothing. No, pick that up. Oh. Does something this way. Oh, I see. We gotta capture the water. Okay. This should do it. Yes. So do I have to undo this? Is that what triggered it? Still closed. I think I need to start turning this wheel again, right? Yeah, so I think the only thing I actually need to do to get that back open is... Well, let's put this back in place. I think I just need to change this one, and then the water should be able to get to the wheel on the left. Yeah. Oh, hey, can I, like, move this box? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Cool. my weapon. Probably need to go this way through the crack in the wall instead of up the pitch black stairs. That's a monster. Pistol bullets. Okay, so we are going to get guns at some point. Oh, God. That just outright killed him. I'm not sure if the combat is just really wonky or if it's just my inexperience, but I keep like blocking all sorts of weird ways and the camera just is not doing good things. Ah, I see. Getting the cave uh, cleared out of water by turning on the pumps is, I guess, just to get that extra stuff, I think? The thing I actually need to do is get the elevator going, which I can do by moving this one here, and we get this sort of secret, almost hidden little water wheel in the back. I think that'll do it. Yeah, it's open now.
Going down and down and down has always been a theme in Silent Hill. I like that we're doing that here with the Devil's Pit. It's very cool how when it breaks, it doesn't just totally stop working, you get to use the stick, the handle. the mines. In the early years of Devil's Pit, minecarts were used as a transportation tool for moving materials in and out of the pit during the mining process. The train carts rode on steel tracks and were initially pushed and pulled by either animals or humans, later replaced by engines. Due to the precipitous angles, inclines, and declines of the Devil's Pit tunnels, it was unavoidable that the tracks would have sharp, hazardous, and often deadly turns. Humans working in the mines were warn warned to avoid riding aboard the carts whenever possible, as the death rate for such a journey was estimated at 40%. Quite simply, this meant 4 out of every 10 miners who hitched a ride aboard a mine cart met an unfortunate end. Let me guess, we're gonna ride one. Train accident at Devil's Pit causes death of eight children. By Wally Thompson, staff writer. And what Silent Hill law enforcement officials are calling an unprecedented tragedy. Uh, uh, eight children were killed last night when the tour train in which they were riding derailed in the Devil's Pit mines. Witnesses claimed that J.P. Sater, the train's operator, was visibly intoxicated at the time of the accident and that negligence on his part may have led to the derailment. The train guy was drunk, said Philip Minton, a tourist from Chicago. He was belligerent to everyone, even the kids. There was no way he should have been operating anything. We've just begun investigating this terrible accident, and it's far too soon to speculate on anything, Detective Edward Rogers told reporters this morning. Rest assured, we will utilize all available police resources and personnel to uncover the cause. The Silent Hill Tourism Authority has shut down all Devil's Pit operations indefinitely, and has released the following statement. We are saddened by the horrific accident involving the tourist train at our facilities, and we pledge to fully cooperate with law enforcement officials in all aspects of their investigation. So that's the accident that the, the mail delivery person who disappeared into thin air was talking about, I think. I think it was them that mentioned it. J.P. Sater. That's the guy I met outside. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you a person? I would call them mannequins, but I don't know about that. Maybe I should take a med kit. I'm not sure how hurt this is. I'm pretty covered in blood, but uh, I'm gonna wait till I take more damage. See what happens. 
That's literally the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, just a handle. Oh my god. I'm starting to limp now. Let's take a medkit. Can only get one hit off, huh? I could run, but let's try it. Let's try to kill him. Oh, I got a strong attack off. Too bad. Ah, oh, damn it. Ooh, I'm limping again. Do I have another med kit? Yes. Big monster. <sighs> it seems like the enemies, or at least that enemy, shows damage the same way you do. More, like, blood and scuff marks appearing on them. Devil's Falls. The breathtaking waterfall before you is the Devil's Falls. As the second highest continually flowing single drop waterfall in North America, it plunges 1,419 feet to the subterranean river below. During the spring runoff, the Devil's Falls flow at a rate of 300 cubic feet per second. That's 2,400 gallons every second. The Devil's Falls feed an underground river system that flows through over 20 miles of limestone caverns until they empty into nearby Toluca Lake. The Gillespie Coal and Iron Company put the power of Devil's Falls and the Underground River to good use, using the flowing water to power various mining systems. Gillespie Coal and Iron? Like Dahlia Gillespie? JP? Sainer! Oh, it's just 
you. What are you doing, JP? Uh, you know. Enjoying the view. You know, they say if you were to put the Empire State Building in here, it wouldn't even reach halfway to the top of this place. Seems like a dangerous place to be sightseeing. You know, none of those things they said about me are true. The papers and stuff, people around town, my lawyers, they said it was just... circumstantial evidence and whatnot. That's what I kept telling them. Yeah, I read all about it. Those newspaper men are goddamn fucking liars. Relax, man, we're just, we're just talking here. What happened? That was an accident. I didn't mean to hurt nobody. I didn't murder nobody. Murder's a mortal sin. You go to hell for murder. Ain't that right, Murphy? Surely your mama taught you about what's right and what's wrong. Those kids had parents that might disagree with you. The paper mentioned negligence. It was an accident! You were completely hammered. There were witnesses. And how about you, Murphy? Someone know all your dirty little secrets? I never hurt anybody that didn't deserve it. And I sure as hell never hurt any kids. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. <laughs> you call this living? Can you imagine what that's like, Murphy? Living all your life inside someone else's lie? Can you? <laughs> Listen to us talk. As if anybody out there gives a damn. And we're the ones who decide if we can live with what we've done. I'm gonna console him. Wait. What do you mean? Just wait a second. Be seeing you around, Murphy. No! Okay, I love this. There's a, a trend happening now, and, and I hope they. Jumped. I hope they keep it up. That's the second time I've had to make a decision to basically save somebody or don't. The first time I tried to save them, but I wasn't able to help them in time, and they fell to what I presume is their death. This time I try to help them, and they jump off anyway. That's actually really cool. That's really interesting. It's not just a simple, like. It's not just be the hero or be the bad person. Even if you try to sort of be the hero, it just doesn't work out. I almost hope it keeps doing that, because that really messes with expectations. And also, it's so fitting for Silent Hill. They try to make things better, but everything just, <laughs> just sucks all the time. Silent Hill isn't really the place where... People are saved, you know? Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to continue around Devil's Pit.